I think um, the part of the acting process that, fe uh, that scares me is every time I get a new role every single time. And I think um, every actor feels exactly the same because there's that exhilaration, first of all, when you think, oh my gosh, I've got an amazing script. Wow, I've, been, I've got this incredible part. How exciting. And then it's like, oh, how am I going to find them? How am I going to do this? Where is this person? Perhaps this character won't come to me. Like, oh my gosh, maybe I can't act this time. Like, I have that on every single role that I do. And I think if I didn't, then I wouldn't be choosing the right roles because I wouldn't be challenging myself. And I've sp spoken to so many actors and they all feel the same. And I think actors should not feel scared by the fact that they're scared. I think it's a good sign, I, I really do. And I think the fear is a motivator. And I also think um, it's a challenge to learn to use fear and to use it as something that's really positive for you and that works for you and uh, that makes you better. I do consciously try and vary my roles um, and also I get bored really easily so I just feel like if I played one type of role then I wouldn't want to play it again because I'm constantly looking to challenge myself and really scare myself. I want to do something that I didn't think was possible that I didn't realize that I could find in myself so that's how I choose roles. I just choose it on the basis of what, what moves me and what excites me. I think in, in everyday life we get stuck into playing one role so we see ourselves and we say you know I'm shy or I'm serious or I'm you know and it's not until you get an opportunity that forces you to come out of yourself that you realize you're not those things at all because we are all made up we're multifaceted you know and we are capable of anything so you know you look at another human being and you say oh that person saved someone from rescue uh, from a, a fire you know building them on fire and they jumped in the, into the fire and they rescued somebody and I could never do anything like that because I'm not brave enough but you don't know until you get put in that situation what you're capable of and acting constantly forces you to, to step into the shoes of someone that you didn't think you'd ever be anything like and then you discover actually I have a lot in common with this person and actually I, I discovered something amazing about myself that I'm capable of all sorts of things that I never knew before like for instance with me with Paula and Moonlight you know I never thought I would really understand what addiction was all about and through exploring that role I feel as though we are all actually addicted to something on some level and actually Paula, the distance between myself and Paula is far smaller than I realised. To find Paula was, um, I mean it was really difficult because I don't drink alcohol, I don't smoke, and I, you know, I don't even like drink coffee. I'm like a complete and utter health nut. So I was really apprehensive about how I was going to find this crack addict that is ultimately, you know, the woman that I was playing. Um, the mother part of things, I thought, yeah, I, I can do that. But it was the addiction, really, that was really, um, really scared me. Um, and how I really did it was YouTube. YouTube, I just think, is an incredible mine of information. You can find anything that you want there. And there are these amazing clips of um, footage by people who go uh, into like crack dens with their camera phones and they interview crack addicts and they go into all kinds of places that you would never feel safe going to you know, yourself, but they get in there and they you know, interview these people and it's such an incredible insight. There are also fabulous documentaries about addiction, um, uh, and about Miami in the 1980s and the specific area of Liberty City. You can find all of that on YouTube. And that for me was just this mine of information that I just fed on. And, and then the gaps in the story I really filled in through my imagination. So often we see others as so different from ourselves. And what I think acting forces you to do is realize that actually we are all so similar and we're all just playing roles. And uh, if we just broke down all these like social constructs that we attach to ourselves and labels and all the labels that society wants to attach to us, uh, uh, us as well, then we realize we're really very similar. And I think that's beautiful. And my mum's a writer, um, so I've always grown up believing that the written word is like, you know, that's the Bible, it's the script, you know. So I always... Um, I just use the Bible, the script, 
um, as the mine of information and I just read it lots and lots of times to find out like where are the clues to what my character is thinking, is feeling, what's her backstory. Um, and then once you get all of that information, then there are going to be huge gaps that, you know, there's going to be huge swathes of her life that aren't explored and aren't explained. And that's when you have to do your research and use your imagination. But I love that process. I think it's an incredible um, privilege to be able to create another human being. And then once I've done all that research and I've, I've gathered, all, gathered all the information, then I sit in a chair and I imagine a situation exactly like this. So I imagine that someone is interviewing me and they're asking me questions like, you know, what was it like when you grew up in such and such area? You know, how did you feel about your father? How did you feel about your mother? What was your experience of school like? And I just answer those questions. And as I'm speaking, then the mannerisms of that person come and uh, their voice starts to come as well. And the more I do it, the more those things come to me. So it's not anything thought through in terms of like, I don't think like, oh, I'm gonna use my hands in this particular way as this person or keep my head tilted to the left. But you know, it's not a conscious decision. I think it should be something that happens to you so that the character, once you've done your research, you have to do your research first. But I think you have to allow the unconscious process to happen. I love fantasy um, characters. And because Pirates of the Caribbean is this crazy, larger than life, you know, totally unreal world, nobody could say, well, a character wouldn't behave like that, or she wouldn't do that, she wouldn't say that, she wouldn't behave in that way. There's absolutely, in those fantasy um, worlds, you can do anything, you know, and you're totally free. And so Tia Dalma was a total creation of my imagination. And I loved the process of finding her. And I loved how liberated she was and how playful she was. and. Yeah, so it, it was, that was fantastic for me. And it was the first time that I had um, kind of explored, actually I'd, I'd, done, um, I'd done white teeth before that as well. So I had done a Jamaican accent, but I don't know, I just felt like I was getting in touch with like some part of my Jamaican roots by playing her as well. I think the key to working with other actors is um, being vulnerable, being willing to be vulnerable, um, being completely open, being playful, um, and yeah, you have to be willing to make a fool of yourself ultimately, you know, because that's the only way that you really learn to play with your fellow actors as you should. So it's really important as well that other actors make you feel safe and that you make them feel safe as well because it's a real relationship of trust because you've got, both got to expose yourselves when you're acting. I mean, you absolutely have to believe, you know, in them and their character because that's how you're you know relating to them but ultimately it's something deeper than that even you know it's not just you're not relating I don't think you're ever relating to people just on the basis of their character like it's a soul exchange you know so it's something deeper than that and it's um, something much more intimate and vulnerable for instance you know um, when I'm doing Moonlight um, I met my eldest son who's played by Travante Rhodes uh, 10 minutes before we had a very emotional scene where I had to tell him that I was sorry for all the pain that I had caused him in his life and I was sorry that I was such a bad mother and uh, that he shouldn't let that go on and affect the rest of his life and his heart shouldn't be black as my heart was black by all the experiences that I've had and it was a really emotional scene and we'd only met each other 10 minutes before and we both had to just trust each other to just dive in and, uh, and be willing to be like really vulnerable and really exposed to each other and basically open our hearts to each other. And I think that's, you know, I think that's really brave. And, and I really admire that about acting, that people are constantly willing to go, this is me, you know, and not to hide behind anything. I think you uh, definitely take away something new from each project because uh, each character is forcing you to grow in a new way. I don't think that, personally, I don't believe that characters are ever found on the outside of yourself. I think they're all things that are within you anyway. So it's an exploration journey to find that within yourself and then to bring it into the light. But most of the times you just don't know that those people are within you. Um, and that's what's so special about the journey. And I think that's what's so special about acting is that by finding these different parts of yourself, you grow, you become more whole, and I think you become more complete as a person.